year in Edinburgh and our audience, particularly the fans of live music, I'm delighted it's time for some uh, from a bright young star of the Scottish traditional music scene. I can't quite believe that Iona Fife is only 22 years old. You seem to be been around forever. She's blooming busy and incredibly talented, already well established as one of Scotland's finest folk singers. Uh, she's got roots deep in the traditions of the northeast of Scotland. She was the youngest ever winner, ladies and gentlemen, of the Scots Traditional Music Singer of the Year Award. That was 2018. And she's uh, at the Fringe later this week with Michael Biggins, who's the current winner of the BBC Radio Scotland Young Traditional Musician of the Year and the first ever pianist to win. And in their new show for the festival, Iona and Michael perform songs and tunes in the Scots language. I'm really thrilled that Iona is about to perform for us now, accompanied by Graham Rory and Scott Turnbull. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Iona and the new single, The Called. <laughs>
Wow. Beautiful singing there from Iona, an absolutely a gorgeous accompaniment there from Scott Turnbull and Graham Rory. Really beautiful, guys. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, that was Iona's new single, The Cold. Uh, yeah, you can sort of imagine The Cold, even when it's a wee, a wee bit warm, uh, like, like right now. Iona, we've talked a lot about um, Scots and how important it is to you know, be an advocate for that language. And particularly, I think, you know, it, it's, it's a no-brainer when you hear poetry and when you hear song. And I think we're so, so lucky to be able to sort of go back and forth, if we like. But the Scots language is so rich, isn't it? It is really rich. Um, but when you hear it, like, sung... It's usually a folk song, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, it's usually something that's, you know, maybe burns or it's all, you know, it's, it's a ballad, perhaps. And taking the language and putting it into something that sounds more like a, a pop song is something that I'm kind of keen to do, Mero. Yeah. Yeah? No, it's, it, it's a very good move. Uh, so before we talk more about that, just tell me, I have to ask everybody, how is it for you? What is your lockdown? I can't remember when we last spoke. It may have been during lockdown. Everything is a sort of online blur because you don't remember that stuff so much. Um, when did you last perform live in front of an audience? Oh. Do you remember? Well... We've actually been pretty lucky in the fact that myself and Michael Biggins got to get up to the Cranach Centre um, just a week after the devastating fire that, you know, the, oh. the hail thing was burnt down. Um, but we got to go up and we did a gig to a rotating audience, very, very minimal. But that was amazing. And that was in June. But since then, you know, we actually we got to go to Germany last year. Last this time last year, we were doing two gigs in Germany when things kind of opened up a wee bit, and then it got bad again over yeah. the winter. But it has been compared to doing like you know eighty to hundred gigs a year, which is you know great. Mm -hmm. It just was such a shock to yeah. the system yeah. to be alone and at home yeah. all the time. And lose a lot of your income. This is the other thing. It's been devastating for so many people right across the arts as it has uh, through other industries, I know. Um, so tell us a little bit about the, the show then that you're doing at the Fringe. Yeah, so it's at the Acoustic Music Centre and it's on Thursday night with Michael Biggins on the piano. Um, he's such an amazing musician. Um, as you said, first ever winner of BBC Young Trad. In, in the folk world, the BBC Young Traditional Musician of the Year is such a coveted title yeah. and I'm just so proud to get to play with him. I actually think it's sell out. So unfortunately, <laughs> unless unless some folk put their tickets back, you when I get to hear it. But we actually have a gig in Aberdeen on yeah. the tenth of September, um, which is quite exciting. Um, and there's tickets to that. Oh, that's good. And also, it's great to hear it sold out. I mean, there's clearly a massive audience out there for what you are doing. And that's what I was saying. Genuinely, it's kind of like, I can't believe how young you are because you just work so blooming hard. And as I say, you're such an advocate for uh, Scots as well. Um, I was looking at, um, people might have heard about this, but tell us um, about this getting Scots language on Spotify. Yeah, well, it was last year, last December, I put out a version of In the Bleak Midwinter, but in Scots, and you kindly gave it a wee spin. But I noticed that when I was putting it up on Spotify, musicians can see the back end of Spotify, so we can see how it works, you know, um, not how consumers see it. And I noticed that all of my songs had been listed as English, even though most of them were in Doric or Scots. I thought that was a bit of a, a shame. And then I'm, I realised that actually from the 60s onwards, you've got archive recordings on Spotify and all. So loads of Scots singers have has been wrongly categorised. And I thought that it should be time to change it. So after, you know, a four-month campaign of getting MS SPs like Claire Adamson to write to the CEO and, you know, making an open letter and moaning on Twitter and speaking about it, they finally added it. And I thought that was just... <laughs> um... Yeah, and you can, underst you can understand how that would happen because, you know, sort of whoever it is, as you, as you say, you can see the back end, you get more of an insight into it. But for the rest of us, you can imagine, you know, a big conglomerate, American, they don't have a clue about the different nuances, the different languages. So... Brilliant that you have brought it to their attention. Well, they're actually Swedish, which makes it even worse that Scots weren't. <laughs> no, 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 but like having the Sami language is so yeah. important that you'd think that a company like that would um, value linguistic diversity. And they had every single um, minority language of, you know, the UK up there apart from Scots. But now, just last week, Firefox, Mozilla, you can download and Stravig the internet on um, with the Scots language so you can download your browser in Scots so like ba making things available in Scots is really cool um, and it goes a long way in promoting it to younger folk that maybe oh, yeah. feel like it's not cool yeah 
No, I'm, I'm sure, and uh, you, you're such a good advocate. And you've also been involved with uh, Urvice campaigning for a Scots Language Act. Tell us a little bit more about that, Iona. Yes, yeah, so Urvice was founded originally by a lad named Jack Kapner. And um, we constituted formally last June. Finn Abdi was at home, needing on his work. Um, and this year, we managed to get um, 35 out of 129 sitting MSPs to sign a Scots pledge, saying that they want to promote, protect, and fund Scots. Um, 1.5 million folk in Scotland speak it. Um, that's 30% of us. Um, but it's not funded or promoted. Um, but unfortunately, we're not looking for street signs. Like, I'm not looking for Aberdeen and stuff <laughs> like that. We're looking for actual change when it comes to, well, when it comes to media and broadcasting. And this is a really great opportunity to be able to hear Scots on the radio. Because apart from Robbie Shepherd, you know, you, don't, yeah. you didn't hear it that much. <laughs> and, you know, Robbie Shepherd's a one retired. But um, I'm not trying to call you out live on the BBC. No, no, you would never do no, that. No, I would never do that. Uh, and <laughs> something else which I hadn't been aware of, but uh, my producer today they told me about it is the Scots language browser. Um, what's it called? So, so is that what you? Yes. Yeah, that's what, what you've just been describing there. So it's a browser because one of the things I think is absolutely amazing about it is so you can maximise and minimise. Uh, and for the maximising, you want to do that. It's there's people make notes here, Iona. I love this. <laughs> people in the front row making notes. So the maximiser, you can correct me wrong. It, you, you, it says Mac Muckle, and for the minimiser, Mac Totty. I mean, it was translated by two good pals of mine called Tam Clark and Ashley Douglas, and they worked really hard to translate the entire browser into Scots. If I was doing it, I would have said Mac Smar, like make smaller, right. like Sma. But you know what? They did an amazing job, yeah. and it's it's such a great like for kids to be able to download Firefox and be able to like navigate it in their own language is really cool. Um, and I'm sure there's much more that's going to come because once that you know one tech company or one platform puts Scots into it, they'll see that there is an availability and also um, there's a need and a want for yeah, it. If I yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to sing another song for us, but before you do that, just tell us about the cold, the single. So is it out now? So the call is out on the 10th of September. It's right. got a full band lineup. This is, um, you know, Graham Rory, um, who was playing these instruments. He produced it. Um, we've been macking things in his flat. We have been going into the studio. It's out on the 10th of September, and it's it's just, um, yeah, it'll be the first ever song that I'm aware of that is a pop song written in Scots, because we've heard loads of amazing Scots pop bands, but they've not been singing in Scots, they've been singing in Scottish English. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to my awareness, I don't believe, I think this is yeah. the first day. So oh, it's great. No, it's a beautiful song. And, and even with the sort of stripped back line out there, that was beautiful. It really was, uh, the arrangement. Uh, so let me uh, remind you that uh, Iona Five said my friend show with Michael Biggins is on at the Acoustic Music Centre Thursday night at seven. So tell us about the next song you're going to sing. What is it? The next song is uh, a folk song that was written um, by Richard Thompson who was in Fairport Convention all the years ago and is an amazing solo artist. And we decided to translate it into Scots. And um, it's called Poor Ditchin' Boy. And he wrote it after reading uh, the Lewis Grassic Gibbon novel, Sunset Song, um, which is, yeah, a lovely novel. But yeah, Poor Ditchin' Great. Boy. I'll let you get ready to do that. And uh, Iona's been joined again by Scott and Graham for this performance. Uh, Graham Rory and Scott Turnbull, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Iona Fife.
Scott Turnbull. Cheers. And Iona Fife, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, lovely rendition there of Richard Thompson's Poor Ditching Boy. Uh, absolutely superb. You're listening to The Afternoon Show. We're live on BBC Radio F Scotland. If you just heard that and thinking, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, the performance at the Acoustic Music Centre, but as you heard, they're sold out. Uh, but keep an eye on Iona Fife's website and all the rest of it online to keep up to date with everything that she's up to. She's a busy woman.